And actually another composer um, who used a lot of sort of Schoenberg's ideas and, and went well beyond those, um, actually I think I just discovered is um, uh, an emeritus professor at Gresham College, um, Yanis Sinarkis. Um, he was a Greek composer um, who was very obsessed with mathematical ideas. Um, this piece here actually is a piece called Mesostasis. Uh, the, uh, it's the score for that piece. But if you looked at that, you would... At first sight, I'd say, well, that's a piece of geometry. It looks like hyperbolic geometry, not a, um, a piece of music. Um, and Xenarchus was very interested in symmetrical ideas. And in fact, he dedicated a piece called Nomus Alpha to one of my mathematical heroes, Everest Galois, who developed a language in order to describe symmetry. Um, and uh, he wrote this piece for solo cello, which is based on a symmetrical object. Um, now, it's a three-dimensional symmetrical object, and I'm intrigued to see what symmetrical object um, is going to be conjured up in your mind's eye by uh, the following piece of music. symmetrical objects come to the mind? Well, uh, that was, in fact, a cube, but even when I'm told that that's a cube, I find it quite hard to hear where that cube is hiding inside that piece of music. Um, uh, but actually, it's probably uh, uh, a little bit of a cheat, because I probably need to play you um, uh, the whole piece, because the way Xenarchus used the cube is to do a kind of theme and variations. Um, so what he did was to put uh, musical ideas that the cello can play. So you heard them already at work there, things like the pizzicato or the glissandi, or turning the bow upside down and hitting the strings with the wooden side. And he put these on the eight corners of the cube. And then he had a, a second cube which would control the sort of amount of time spent on these particular musical ideas. And then what he would do in each variation, he would do a, a symmetrical move of the cube, and then he would read off the, or, the new order from which these um, uh, musical ideas had to be played. And so actually the constraints of the symmetries of the cube are constraining the way that the cello is working its way through um, these different ideas. And then inside that frame, he would then be creative. And it's interesting, Stravinsky again said, um, uh, I can only be creative under huge constraints. And I think many composers enjoy these mathematical structures in which then to force themselves into a, kind of, um, a new area of creativity. <laughs> 